Welcome to another episode of Burn Peak Express, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little different, but kind of the same. I have before me two sets of pedals that look identical, but I assure you they're not. Right here, I have a set of Race Face Chester pedals. It's a set of nylon pedals, so they're basically made of plastic. They have really good bearings, and they're not very expensive. They're about 40 bucks. There's nothing you can do on a set of $120 pedals that you can't do on these, but this is America. That wasn't cheap enough. The Fuker pedals. What do these have to do with the race face chesters. I mean, they're just other nylon pedals, right? Made cheaper from another company. There's something very sinister about these. These are an exact copy of the chesters. And from far away, you might just say, oh, okay, they're just a little bit the same. No, no. Every single cut and groove and dimension is exactly the same. I showed these to some people and they said, they must have stolen the mold. It's 2020, it's way easier than that. You can take a 3D scanner, scan these pedals, clean up the input in the computer, and boom, you have a pedal that looks the same. For instance, there's a logo, a race face logo, and it looks like they used that logo and filled in and removed little parts to make it say KP, which doesn't even correspond to their logo. Once it was in the computer, they could have changed a few little lines. They could have done just something to make it a little bit different from the race face pedal, but they didn't, except for the name, which is Fuker. If you've ever met somebody from Northern England, that's how they drop F-bombs. So they didn't do their research or they didn't use a very good English name generator when they came up with these pedals. Right off the bat, I know that the insides of these pedals are different. The bearing in this one's way looser than the race face bearing, which I just recently pressure washed in a video and it held up fine. Wait. We're gonna check right now. Wouldn't be surprised if the Fuker is actually lighter. Race face Chester is 177 grams. Fuker is 180 grams. Pretty much the same. Now let's take a look at the box. So the top says bicycle pedal and they have some instructions on the back and then they have their little kind of marketing slogan. It says, Ride with a dream. Well, that makes sense. Actually, that doesn't make any sense at all. The thing that makes me the angriest about this is if you go to Amazon and you type in Race Face Chester, these come up first. These come up before the Race Face Chesters. The Fookers, the engineer that worked on it, the sponsored rider that's testing it and making sure it's safe for all of us, they don't have to do any of that. All Fooker has to do is just make the same pedal, make it look the same, and sell it for half the price. I don't even know how this can be legal. So first, I'm taking apart the Chester pedals, which I've owned many sets of them. I've bent them before. They're not invincible. You have this cap on the outside. Then you have another cap that goes in front of the bearing. And then you have the actual nut that holds the bearing in. So these are very well protected from the elements and there's a really tight dust seal on this side that keeps any water ingress from getting in. That's really important on pedals because if you're going through a shallow creek crossing, the only part of your bike that might see any water is the pedal. Okay, so let's take the cap off of the Fuker pedal and see what's in there. I'm guessing they probably did the same thing as Race Face. Mmm, looks a little different. On the Fuker pedal, I'm right down to the greasy part after just taking out this one piece and it was a lot looser. Let's see what happens when I take this off. Whoa, really loose. They did the same thing as Race Face, where there's this outer cap to keep anything from getting in. Then there's a cap that goes over the bearing, but on the Fuker, there's a hole in it, so it's not really keeping anything from getting to it. It's like a completely unnecessary part that they put in there to copy Race Face, but they don't even know why it's there. All right, so let's take this apart further and see what's in here. Just a little nut, and now spindle should come out. So. Nice grease. Looks like a sealed bearing cartridge. It looks real good. So, is this the same size nut? Yes, it is. Pretty much identical here, too. Oh, not identical. 
They're a little different. There's a little extra machining on the race face one. You can see it kind of like fits tight into the pedal and then tapers down. On this, there's just a straight taper that just kind of fits into the side of the, uh, the pedal there. Also, the bearing seal, the rubber on the Fuker pedal is very brittle. It's just kind of a little rubbery ring. The race face one is like proper held in place, very soft, very supple seal but I don't see anything that sticks out to say that these Fuker pedals are bad. Obviously the internals on the race face pedal are better. Now I can see the threads on the end of the Fuker pedal have a much higher pitch of machine thread and race face seems to be a much finer thread so you can kind of adjust it. If a pedal ever gets loose and sloppy, you kind of want to tighten that nut to adjust the tension of the pedal so that it doesn't move around. So you want a really fine machine thread to be able to do that and on the Fuker, you're not gonna be able to adjust it very much at all. There is a little bit of slop in this pedal, even when I have it tightened down a lot. I can move the pedal spindle in and out a little bit inside the bearing cartridge. As that happens with water and dust around, it's gonna definitely allow for some ingress. So we'll put this redundant piece on here that doesn't really seal anything up because it has a freaking hole in it. This is not particularly enjoyable to work on because when you put the hex wrench through, instead of pushing it down into the thread, the freaking hex wrench just goes right through it. Like, what were they thinking with this? If I seem a little angry, it's because this wasn't made by mountain bikers. It's made by somebody who wants to make money off of mountain bikers, but they don't really know what's good for mountain bikers. They have to copy it from real mountain bikers. It's also hilarious in how many places it says Fuker. Like, they're really, really proud of that name. I don't know how they come up with these names. Like, is there an English English name generator. Let's see. English company name generator. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Enter words and click generate. Let's type in pedal, generate, pedaro. That would have been a way better name. Pedgenix, pedal destination, pedx, pedporium. Oh my God, there's two more pages of this. Guys, as terrible as these names are, they're all better than Fuker. If this company came to me and said, hey, Seth, we need a really good name for this pedal company, I would call it Pedal File. And they would probably just say that's fine and just print it on there. What research do you think they did about what kind of steel to use on this and how to harden it and how to temper it back? It could be so brittle that I land off a jump and it freaking snaps off. If they didn't even research to see if Fuker is a good name, then we know how much research they did about the rest of this product. Gets me so heated, man. I get so heated about this stuff. I have a long-term plan with these pedals, much like with the Rev Grips, except I'm gonna do it a little bit different because we're doing a comparison here. I have here a left Race Face Chester and a right Fuker pedal. These are going on my hardtail, and then I'm gonna ride them for some months, at least until this COVID thing is over so I can take it through creek crossings and really put some miles on them on the trails. Then we're gonna take them apart and see what the difference is between them. Now today, because I can't cram months into this video, we're just gonna to go for a ride and have fun. We're gonna go around Burn Peak and use it as an excuse to just, you know, pedal around and jump stuff. So while we're going for our little ride, we're gonna do an experiment. I have, these are the other pedals, the ones that I didn't install on the bike, and we're gonna take them over to the bike wash station. Here, this bin's got a bunch of dirt and stuff in it, perfect. And we'll put this in here, cause it'll probably break down the grease and stuff. Riding through soap water is not something you're actually gonna do with a bicycle, but you are gonna ride through creek crossings and actually submerging these in soapy water, if there's any sort of ingress, is gonna do way more to remove grease from the spindle if the seal isn't good than anything else. So it should give us a pretty accelerated idea of how this is gonna work. We're gonna leave these in here the entire time we're doing our little ride and we get back to the shop we'll take these apart and see what they look like so my prediction is that we're going to discover precisely nothing by going for a ride right now i think it's going to get a lot more interesting when we go back and review these pedals but we're going to go out in the woods and have some fun and i think i want to start it off with a proper beat down on these pedals like a nice hard landing and so i'm trying to think of something i can huck to flat off of let's go give it a shot yeah so here goes, pretty bummed out about having to do this. <laughs> Definitely clap the new suspension and put some pressure on the pedals. 
We know the new hardtail frame's good to go. Uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that with this whole COVID thing. I'm supposed to be dialing back the risk, riding the things I know well. We're gonna put in the video anyway, but don't do that. Let's take a look at some of the newer stuff that we built here. So this new feature, Elmer Fudd, is so much fun because you do all that stuff up there, you come around that turn, you come over here, you get a little bit of downhill action in, and then you have this like big proper feature in front of you that slows everything down. It actually takes longer to get to the bottom taking that line, even though it's more direct than the other because you have to slow down so much for the feature instead of just zipping through the trail. So when Alex was in front of me, it added an entire eight seconds to the run. I'll stop short of saying I like it more than the whale tail, but this is one of my favorite features here. So let's go session it. So as we rightly predicted, I don't feel any difference between these pedals. Sorry if I don't have anything crazy to report. We're really gonna notice the differences after six or so months. I will say, if you're gonna make a carbon copy of something, it's good to make a carbon copy of something good. These do feel all right. They're probably not bad. They're probably not unsafe. You know, a lot of people have gotten them on Amazon. I've seen a lot of reviews. Nobody said that they snapped or anything like that. So I'm not saying that just because you copy something in appearance, identically that it's going to suck, right? These could very well be great pedals. They could very well last really good after six months. We don't know yet, but I still hate the fact that these exist. You know, what incentive do companies have to do research and development and hire sponsored riders and keep the sport going if we're okay with that. I get it, you're not a bad person if you bought these pedals. I did for the purpose of this video. To each his own, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not trying to act like I'm better than anyone because I don't think these are good. I'm just saying, if you're a mountain biker and you can afford to just get the real thing, it's better for our sport that we love. All right, they were clean before we put them in, and now they're even cleaner. Let's inspect these on the bench and see what we're working with. All right, so we soaked these pedals in water for, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or something to simulate a whole bunch of months of creek crossings, and let's see what we're working with here. The outer part, I don't think any water would have gotten in from there because there's an actual plug holding it in place. So we're just gonna take these out so that we can get inside the pedal pull out the spindle where the dust seal is doing all the work. See how that held up against the soapy water. I actually do not see one droplet of water in here. There's no water beating up. There's no water kind of dripping off the grease. This is 100% sealed. Let's take apart the Fuker. Okay, this one's, this one's definitely wet. You can tell on the seal that it's wet. Like this is not grease over here. This is definitely water. But I gotta say, not much water. I think if you took this through some creek crossings over the course of some months, there's enough grease in it and the parts are kind of tight enough where I don't think it would be that big of a deal. You know, I gotta give credit where due. They didn't do such a bad job on the ceiling over here. Not perfect, but it's half the cost. If I'm being honest about these pedals, they are pretty much the same thing. I mean, they look the same. They certainly feel the same when they're on a bike. They have a decent amount of protection from the elements. They're not bad pedals. I'm not gonna be dishonest with you guys and just tell you it's crappy because I don't like it. It's it's not crappy. It's it's not that bad. And I still think that this is kind of sinister, almost evil. And I don't think you guys should buy these pedals. I don't think anyone should at the risk of sounding preachy or whatever. This sucks. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.